and then this um, goes into how we were looking at the original um, geometry, the polygons, which are the you know first start out point, and then um, how the tile system started to relate to that. This image here shows uh, yeah a much better. You can see in red the original polygon of the um, of the uh, packing that we did originally. So the structural voxel there basically, right? Yeah, exactly. And how it shares its um, edges are actually fold lines in um, a multiple six shared triangular tiles. And each tile was um, you know, related to the original base geometry. So if you go to the next slide, you can see the way that that manifests itself. You know, so we did a little full scale mock-up and trying to do a simple bend in a triangular tile and generate this whole cladding system. Uh, so the next slide, these are some versions using the um, you know, little design tool. Uh, and yeah, that's coming back to the end of line. <clears throat> awesome. Um, there were a couple Let's let's talk let's talk through this because this is really interesting. Yeah, so this is an overall diagram of the process, starting with our design surface, and it shows um, you know circle packing and then the mesh remeshing, surface panelization into the um, and the voxelization from that. And go to the next slide. Oh, uh, you know voxelization splits into. On our right side is some of the secondary systems that we had to do, the glazing package and, um, you know, some of the rationalization of the uh, attributes of the voxels. On the left, we had um, the panelization. Uh, let's see, what else? Bolt location. You know, there's a whole bunch of uh, um, structural analysis that went into both strands down that side. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I don't know if you want me to uh, send you a link, Mark, to one of the structural papers. You know, I think that there's mm -hmm. some interesting stuff in there that I didn't want to get into, but um, yeah, we can share it with everybody for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll send it to you, and you can make it available if you want. So. Cool. All right. And then let's see. Yeah, I think we should conclude on that one. Yeah. Okay. So this is just back uh, early image when they had, you know a dynamically relaxed surface with the uh, polygons packed out on it and uh, we were just mashing it up over the top of uh, slab and glazing to kind of seek out a shell shape early. So. Man. It's quite beautiful I have to say. Um, okay so let's see here. So we do have one question. <clears throat> we've had a couple that we've kind of sprinkled in along the way. If anybody has any other questions they want to share in the uh, uh, with us, please do, do so in the, the GoToWebinar question box. But I'm going to start with Joshua here. He said, um, and I think this was back when we were talking about um, the mind mapping software, um, and we were also kind of overlaying that with, you know, working with other, other groups. And he said, you know, at what point did you start consulting with and how easily were you able to interface with the structural and mechanical engineers? That's a topic that you and I talked about um, as being a really key part to the realization here. So can you talk talk through that and your advice, I guess? Right. We we had a working relationship with Front since uh, I think 2003. I saw a market to smart geometry in Ontario, and you know they had four people in their firm at that time. We've always seen the world um, very similarly. I think those guys are great problem solvers, and I think that we end up you know, starting on the problem setting side more and using our tools as investigative and design generating versus, you know, so because that relationship existed, our initial relationship with the gallery when they when they did that set for us, we started in a very loose, um, trusting <laughs> relationship, you know, pre, um, before they had any of the uh, integrated project delivery contracts out there, but it was, you know, a known thing that we had to work together to generate enough information to be sure that we had a viable thing that we we're going to be able to go forward with. So having had that experience with those guys on the structural side very, very early on, before we even had our own resources um, rolling strongly, I had called Mark and said, can we um, get you guys to take a look at this and think about how we're going to approach this um, shell 
and uh, so he gave us two resources dedicated, you know, X percent of their time to our project, and even before we knew what we were going to do, and that helped um, actually drive, you know, the set of decisions because the capacity that they brought um, it helped influence the whole project. So, and on the mechanical side, I, you know, it's not that we don't um, pull in the mechanical early; it's that um, you know, I think we had a real strong sense of uh, the nature of an. And we really, I wanted this thing to be that integrated um, design where the shell itself was its own, you know, uh, breathing element, its own conduit, its own everything. And um, so, because we had that at the outset in the back of our mind, um, it was only when we started getting into actual volumes and concern about, you know the behavior of the air and stuff that we got our engineers involved, but we had kind of had that lurking for a long time in the back of our mind. So. Awesome. All right, well, I'm going to end it there. So, uh, so first of all, thank you, John, so much for sharing this amazing project with us um, here at our inaugural Super Simple uh, podcast. Um, and thanks to everyone who tuned in and who submitted questions today. Um, I'm excited uh, about this idea, this, this podcast idea, and uh, I'm excited to hear any feedback, any uh, other ideas you guys might have for future episodes and things you'd like to see. Um, uh, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning of our uh, session today, if you want to attend our next Super Simple broadcast on June 8th, um, uh, where we'll feature Andrew Watkins of Ira St. Grove, uh, where he's going to talk about, uh, you know, using uh, digital coordination uh, through the design and construction process on their AIA TAP award-winning project for the University of Delaware's Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Lab project. Make sure you go to blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register for that episode. Um, and to learn more about the software tutorial curriculum I mentioned earlier, go to blackspectacles.com where you can watch any uh, and try out any of the free course videos. And for those of you who are ready to start learning some new design tools, you can use coupon code 51116SS15YT to get a 15% discount for the entire duration of your Black Spectacles software tutorial membership. And then finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video here so you can let us know what you think. Um, share any suggestions that you may have for, um, for additional content or other, other ideas you may have, as well as you know, way, ways we may do this differently. Um, as we always always do, I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching.